amen. We're going to have Pastor Mitchell, which will be breaking the bread of life on today. All right. Pastor All right. Pine Line Glen Echo Church to come up, amen, and let the Lord use him. Come on, give him a hand. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. This morning, but I'm filled out. Yeah. Yeah. That Holy Ghost has showed up, man. Yeah. Showed out. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But I'm concerned we're gonna get an invitation. Amen. Already. Yeah. Anybody know it's anointing? Yeah. I say anybody know it's yeah. anointing to break the yoke. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. I know what I know. You yeah. can't nobody do you like Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Nobody, nobody. could find nobody to do me like the Lord. All right. Amen. We're going to come and give you a word. Amen. Like I said, I'm already filled. Amen. So it don't take much. Amen. Holy Ghost has done what it had to do. Amen. amen. In this season. If you didn't get yours, amen, already, shame on you. Amen. Amen. We ask for you to stand, if you will. Let us go into the book of 2 Samuel. All right, all right. 2 Samuel chapter 6. And I will be reading verses 16 through 23. Again, that's 2 Samuel. That's in the Old Testament. Chapter 6, verses 16 through 23. And the Bible reads, As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michelle, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in a place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. After he had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each person in the whole crowd of Israelites, both men and women. And all the people went into their home. When David returned home to bless his household, Michelle, daughter of Saul, called, called out to meet him and said, How the king of Israel has distinguished himself today going around half naked in a full view of the slave girls, of his servants, of any vulgar fellow would. Uh -oh. David said to Michelle, it, it was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father right. or anyone from your household when he appointed me ruler of the Lord's people Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. Yes, yes. I will become even more undignified than this. And I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. And Michelle, daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. All right. Amen. As you go to your seats, let us leave with you a theme this morning, protecting your joy. Protecting your joy. I know the Holy Spirit has showed up here today, but amen. You better be playing with too. So as you about this know the devil gonna get this. Amen. He wants to take your joy. I'm just trying to tell you, amen. We need to be aware of the joy stillers. All right now. Better say that. Yeah, yeah. There are people trying to steal your joy. Have you ever felt like someone or something has stolen your joy? All right, now. Yeah, yeah, you know the city. You, you buy a new home and somebody tell you that you bought it in a bad neighborhood. Come on. Come on. You get a new job, somebody tell you, man, well, they don't really pay enough. You plan a family picnic and it rained all that weekend. But I just come here this morning to let you know don't let negative people or events 
have power over your life. What I'm trying to say here is that you need to protect your joy. Your joy. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And it don't matter on your situation or your circumstances. God is still good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Yes, he is. Protect your joy by limiting people who, who disturb your peace. Amen. Yeah, some folks you just gotta put a restriction on. Come on, somebody. Avoid people who constantly rub you the wrong way. Hallelujah now. Surround yourself with godly folks. Yeah. All right, all right. Remember, you are in control. You yeah. are in, in control of your own happiness. Yeah. All right, no one has the power to steal your joy. Yeah. That's right. Not unless you just give it to them. All right, all right, now. all right. Now the ark. Let's give you a little background. It was a box, a wooden box. That held sacred items representing Israel's history and their relationship with God. The Bible said that the Philistines had captured the ark, which represented the presence of God, represented the presence of God to the Israelites. And the Philistines, who had captured every region that they held the ark of God. God cursed. And folks were dying everywhere. So the Philistines got together and decided that we need to get rid of this ark and return it back to the Israelites. So the Bible says later, after they had made an agreement with the Israelites, we find David retrieves the ark from Abinadab's house. And David and the Israelites transport the ark to Jerusalem. But the Bible says we're on the way. And oxen stumble, if yeah. you will. All right. And Uzzah reached out now to stabilize the ark. Let's stop it from falling. And the Bible says that the wrath of God uh -huh. struck him dead. Well, because he touched the ark. That's right. That's right. Now the Leviticus law said that only the priests yes, could handle and transport the ark. That's right. Mm -hmm. And David was fully aware of the law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in his enthusiasm, he disobeyed the law. That's right. Let that be a nugget here that you can't do anything you want to do. All right, uh, all right. And still serve the God. All right. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Whether you had good intentions or not. Amen. So we find here that a good man called us died for David's disobedience. Uh -huh. David, fearing God's wrath, left the ark in the house of Obed Edom. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. David lay in his. Later on, of the blessing that Obed Edom's house is receiving because of the blessings of the ark. Uh -huh, uh -huh. David then decides that he will again try to return the ark back to Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah, so. This time, David is using proper protocol. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This time, yeah. David is using the proper reverence uh -huh. to the Lord Almighty. And as David enters the city, David is dancing and David is leaping ah, right. before the Lord with joy. Right. And the scripture says, as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michelle, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. Now understand that Michelle was the first wife, but here she is called the daughter of Saul. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You might wonder why. Well, probably this indicated 
said that she had the same attitude as her daddy. Now remember Saul was unfaithful. He wasn't really loyal and trustworthy to the Lord. He saw he's he like some of us sometimes. We got our good days and our bad days. But I heard somebody say that 99 and a half just won't do. You either all in or you all out. Come on, somebody. Amen. She sees David's dancing and leaping. It's disrespectful. In fact, she's disgusted at David's action, and the Bible says that she despises the other word, hates him. Now, what could be the reason? Well, maybe. Maybe she's still hurting from separating from her former husband, Paul Till. Remember that in the past, David was, was, was fleeing from Saul's persecution. And during that time of persecution, Saul decided to give Michelle, who was David's wife at the time, to this fellow called Paul Tell. Well, well. But when David came back into power, Come on. David, one of David's first commands was that he wanted the return of his wife. Come on now. And I found it funny, the Bible said that Paul Tell, the former lover, was following Michelle as she went back to David Ooh. crying. Ooh. After she had left the marriage bed. Uh. And we might ask, well, why did David and Michelle receive God's presence in the city so differently? Yeah. Why, why was one, why was David overjoyed and why was Michelle so bitter about the blessing of the Lord coming into Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe it was because they came from two different sides of the mountain. All right. Yeah, anybody know about the two different sides of the mountain? Yeah, yeah, Michelle, now she was born the daughter of a king. She was born into royal society. Yeah, yeah, she was born, as we say, she had a spoon, silver spoon in her mouth. All right. And Michelle, in Michelle's world, her family made the rules. They didn't have to follow. Come on, somebody. In contrast, now there was David. Who came on from the other side All right. of the mountain? Anybody know about the other side of the mountain? All right, yeah. He was born the son of a sheep herd. Uh -huh. yeah. His family were people of the land, farming and agriculture. In David's world, his family followed the rules. Yeah. All right, they yeah. didn't make them. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm trying to say, on, on one side of the mountain, was champagne wishes and caviar dreams. Oh, all right now. But on the other side of the mountain was nothing but heartaches and shattered dreams. That's right. And, and, and I believe that you learn to love God more when you done went through some struggles. Come on, yeah. And God promoted David from a lowly shepherd to a great king. Yes. I, I, what I'm saying is it's a different type of joy. Yeah, yes it is. When God has brought you from the tail to the head. Come on, somebody. Oh yeah, it's a different type of joy when you came from the bottom up to the top. It, it's a higher level of joy. When God makes your enemies your, your footstool. I understand this room is the greater the sacrifice, the greater the joy. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in a place the Bible said that David had prepared a place for it. And while it was there, the Bible said that David burnt offerings and gave fellowship offerings for the Lord. And you might ask the question some of you theologians out there, why would could David who wasn't a Levite, sacrificed burnt off. Okay, now. Understand, he already been in trouble. Yeah. Only a priest mm -hmm. could place the sacrifices on the altar. Mm -hmm. But the Bible said that anyone who was ceremoniously clean could assist the priest. Yeah. So David probably offered these sacrifices to God, aided by the priest. Yeah. After all, after God's wrath on us, I'm, I'm sure that David didn't want to go back You're right. and break protocol 
all again. Come on, somebody. Amen. So, and after he had finished sacrificing the burnt office, after he had got through with the fellowship office, yes, the Bible said he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Uh -huh. Understand that it is very important that we have good godly leaders yes. in this world. Yes. Yes. I'm talking about leaders that know and love the Lord. Yes. Yes. Leaders who show compassion and justice yes. to God's people. Yes. Leaders that pray yes. and put God first above any and all decisions. And also, we as God's people are called to always pray for our leaders. Yes. Amen. The Bible said right. that David gave a loaf of bread and some cake of dates and some, some raisins to each person in the crowd, both men and women. And they went home. Uh -huh. But see, I want you to understand the, the sequence, the importance, the sequence of events here. First, the Bible said that David prayed. Mm -hmm. I said David prayed for all the people. Amen. And then secondly, David acted as a blessing by giving all the people food. Uh -huh. Understand and prove this, that God only, God blesses us so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. To bless his household. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that his wife, uh -oh. the daughter of Saul, came to meet him. Yes, Lord. And said, How proud, how, how distinguished did the king of Israel look today? Uh -huh. Going all around half naked mm -hmm. in front of those slave girls. <laughs> like somebody ignorant, like somebody bold. David desired the same blessings now that he had witnessed in Obed Edom's house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Michelle's attitude blocked the blessings. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to tell you, sometimes our attitude, uh -huh. the way we go about life, can block our blessings. Uh -huh. I heard the sister say, one thing to pray to God and ask God for what you want, but then you walk around like God ain't going to give it to you. You'll block your blessings. When you pray to God, believe that you shall receive it. Yeah. Yeah. Walk around like you already got the victory. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, I receive it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. She accused David of dancing and leaping like somebody crazy. Mm. But I come and tell you, David's actions were for the, for the Lord. Yeah. His delight was for in the Lord. Yeah. It had no different about who was watching him. She said he was half naked and you know the world would run with that thing but when we say he was half naked at that time he just took off the royal vegetables that he had. Amen. Right. Right. Hey, he just took them on off. Because he wanted to rejoice. Hey, Amen. He wanted to get down with, with everyday folk. Hey, Amen. Understand no matter what your position in life. Don't you know we're all in this thing together? And yeah. when God comes he don't look for no, no person or a uh, uh, respectable person. He's coming for a church without spot or blemish. Yeah. Yeah. No matter where you piss the call, amen. Yeah. Amen. Southern Baptist, no matter. Right. God is coming for one church. Amen. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Amen. So he pulled off his vegetables, amen, so he could worship and sit down with every day folk. That's right. And I look at it and I said, now I don't blame him because ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Because yeah. a Holy Ghost party just don't stop. Michelle told Michelle with her bougie self. She didn't like his form of worship. She preferred to be dignified. She preferred a lot of reverence in her worship. And today we were called, she was part of the frozen chosen. You know them folks, they so holy that they ain't no earthly good. You remember? Back in the day, some folks used to like you. Uh, well, yeah. Amen. They come around, you used to have a smile, make them laugh sometimes. Uh, yeah. Amen. Have a good joke. Amen. Yeah. Now, they liked you before you got saved. Uh, right. uh -huh. 
Yeah, yeah. A lot of us, we got saved, and all of a sudden, now we're trying to judge everybody. All right, now. You can't do this, and you can't do that. All right. You can't wear this, and you can't wear that. Right. I just come and ask you, where is your joy? Right. I don't know about you when I, I first got saved. And, and they told me I came on down on the morning, bitch, amen. And I accepted the Lord. I don't know about you. I went in no deep worship, but I did have joy. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Amen. Protect your joy. Amen. Some of us through ism and skills, we didn't let we didn't let the devil steal our days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we didn't we didn't we didn't got all caught up into church meetings, church politics. But I come to tell you, don't let the devil steal your joy. God is a good God. Oh yeah. I just come to tell you this morning, if you don't get it, it's all right, saints, right. to clap your hands again. Yes, it's all right Amen. to pat your feet. Yes. Amen. It's all right to start to shout. Yes. It's all right to have a Holy Ghost dance. Yes. If we got any leapers in it, it's all right to leap for joy. Yes. Don't lose your joy. Amen. Don't let them church devils. Take your joy. Well, Don't let church traditions stop your joy. Amen. Don't let anybody's opinion yeah. stop your joy. All right, all right, all right. All right. Yeah. Why? Because they don't know your story. All right, all right. I said they don't know your story. been through something. Yeah. And you got that same spirit as they. Yeah. You know that God is a balance yeah. in the time of war. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Somebody been running. You like David. When David ran, trying to escape his son that was trying to murder him. Y'all already know that he is a shelter in the time of something. Come on, somebody. Yeah. 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 David said to the shelter, it was for the Lord who chokes me. Yeah. Rather than your dad. Amen. Rather than the people in your family. Yes, yes. Anybody hear a testimony that God will make a way out of no way? Yes. I just come to tell you this morning that don't protect your joke. I come to tell you this morning that you've been given a divine privilege by God Almighty Himself. That you gave me a privilege that you can praise Him. Yes. Yes. That's right. You have the privilege. The devil's purpose in his life is to take your prey. The devil's life, devil's devil's job is to keep you quiet. The devil's purpose is to take your joy. Because the Pharisees told Jesus, now you Jesus, you need to rebuke the folks. Stop them, the disciples and all these other folks from praising you. And you remember what he said in Luke chapter 19, verse 40? He said, I'll tell you, talk to the Pharisees. Uh -huh. He said, if, 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 if they be silent. He said, don't you know that the very rocks, come on somebody, the very rocks don't give me the praise? Don't stop, don't let the devil take your praise. And I got a word for some of you educated folk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some folk call me educated fool. God to pray. If they know that he's the Lord of Lord and King King, what is that saying about you? They said, I, I will become even more indignant. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I act even more fool. Yeah, yeah, but for anybody that means that God, my God is glorified. I come this morning, what are you willing to do for the Lord? Oh, 
Yeah. So I know until you went to the wife, I know she, she, he, he looked bold, he looked embarrassed. Yeah. But I come and tell you, we need to have that spirit like David. David just really didn't care. Yeah. We got to have the spirit that we really don't care how we serve the Lord, what it looked to nobody else. Yeah. Why would you worry about what somebody else thinks that don't have no heaven or hell to put you in? David said he only cared about what the Lord thought. Yeah. yeah. All right now. The Bible said that the daughter that, that, that Saul's daughter had no children the day of her death. Yeah. The author concludes that she had no children because of her behavior that was displeasing before the Lord. Amen. So we come to tell you, don't let nobody take your joy. That's right. That's your joy is not for sale. Amen. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes, it is. And I will dance to the Lord. Yes. No matter what it looks like, no matter what my circumstances is, right. I come and tell you that God has given me a divine privilege that I will lift it up in season and out of season. When it feels like it, when I don't feel like it. Because God I said he went to the cross and he yeah. died upon Calvary. Yeah. All right, all right. So that you and I could have joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eternal joy. Yeah. And everlasting joy. But the Bible said that he who had no sins died for the sins of the world. Amen. They hung him out on an old rugged cross. Put a crown of thorns on my Jesus here. Church, amen. 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 Joy that you have today. Yes, Lord. 
Amen. You just may be determined. Amen. You don't let nobody take your job. Amen. The devil might have be rolling around like a roaring lion, but he has no power on the children of God. Amen. Claim the victory. Amen. I said claim the victory. Amen. 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 Amen.